The time is 5.35. We're going to go ahead and begin with the meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and this is a public hearing of the San Benito CISD Board of Trustees. Once again, 5.35, I call this meeting to order. Roll call. Ms. Janie Lopez. Present. Mr. Oscar Medrano. Present. Mr. Rudy Corona. Present. Dr. Ariel Cruz. Present. Mr. Orlando Lopez. Mr. Mario Silva. Present. Ms. Teresa Cervellon. Present. Mr. Stephen Weller. And Mr. Moreno is here. We do have a quorum. So with that said, we move into public comment. Before we do so, as I mentioned, the next item of the agenda is public comment. Before we begin, I will remind our audience members of the board's procedures for handling public comment. The public comment portion of our meeting is available to members of the public who wish to address any topic. Anyone who would like to speak during public comment must sign in prior to the start of the meeting and list the topic or topics they want to discuss. Each public comment speaker will be allowed a maximum of three minutes to address the board for each topic. If more than 10 speakers are signed up to speak on the same topic, all additional speakers on that item shall be limited to two minutes. However, any public testimony speaker who requires a translator will receive up to six minutes to address the board. Please keep your comments or criticism civil and courteous. Please avoid using profanity and refrain from making personal attacks on others during your opportunity to speak. Lastly, we ask that you do not discuss students who are not your own children. If a speaker is seeking board resolution of a specific complaint, that concern should be addressed through the district's grievance process. District policy DGBA has been established for addressing employee complaints. Policy FNG is the avenue for filing parent complaints, and policy GF addresses community member complaints. Grievance forms may be obtained at any campus administration office or at the district central administration offices. Thank you. Our first speaker is Ms. Mary Maney. Ms. Maney, welcome. Good evening, Mr. Moreno, uh, Ms. Savion, and board and guests. Uh, the re one of the things I just wanted on this one, uh, I know I have two things, but I just wanted one for the public. Um, when I was looking at that very comprehensive ad that you put out for the notice of public meeting for proposed tax rates, um, and I do know that we're, you're discussing dropping the rate down a little bit, um, how has the question that was coming to my mind because I was doing some research in some of the other math uh, stuff for my classes, uh, the Homestead Exemption Act that we have here, uh, I know everybody gets 10,000 and then it's up to 15,000 on the uh, 65 and older, 100% for those that are 100% VA uh, disabled and all that. Um, but when I was looking at this, I couldn't tell how much of our appraised property value would be affected by that. Because you, you've got the appraised, then you've got the total taxable. And I would think that we have actually more 65 and older and disabled in this area than what it actually looks like. Because it looks like it basically took the 10% off. So. Um, I was just curious as to that, if that was taken, how that was taken into consideration and, um, or if it was taken into consideration when we were looking at the drop of a penny on the tax rate. Thank you. And Ms. Maney, thank you for being here. That other uh, item that you have will be addressed during our regular board meeting? Yes, sir. 10 -4. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we move on to the next agenda item, item 1.3, discussion and presentation of San Benito CISD's proposed tax rate. Ms. Cervellon? Yes, sir. I am going to invite our chief financial officer to the podium, Mrs. Mata. Good evening, uh, Board President Moreno, Board of Trustees, Ms. Cervellon. Uh, for the public hearing for the tax rate, uh, I'll refer to the notice that was published in the newspaper, and I'll just read whatever, what it states, and then if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, so um, the, the public hearing states that we will be having a public hearing today at 5.30 p.m., and um, the maintenance tax rate, at this point, remember, uh, we had, we have, we published at 1.0241, 
for me at MNO rate, but we're bringing that down to 1.0216, which is reflected on the updated um, uh, reports that are on the actual board meeting. Okay, but this was already published. But like I stated at the meeting, at the committee meeting, we can pub, uh, adopt a rate lower than what was published. So we're going to go down from 1.0241 to 1.0216 for the MNO rate. The INS rate is 0 0.2799, and that is again going to stay the, as is. So the total tax rate would be 1.3015. Okay, the next section is a comparison of proposed budget uh, to last year's budget. And for the MNO, it's a decrease of 9.5%. I'm sorry, it's a 9.5% increase. Debt service is uh, 2.37, and the total expenditure is 7.97. So, Mrs. Martha, correction mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. MNO, it's a decrease of 9.15%. 9.15%. Right? Yes, 9.15. Yes, okay. So, the total decrease is 7.97%. And that's for the comparison of proposed budget. On the middle section, that's where our property value is stated. And the um, I'm going to read the current tax information. So the priest value overall is one billion nine hundred fifty-four million four hundred sixty-eight thousand eight hundred sixty-one dollars. And for the new property, it's thirty-four million seven hundred ninety-nine thousand five hundred fifty-three five hundred fifty-three dollars. The taxable value on that is $1,327,889,782. For in the new property is $33,276,385. So our bond debt for all the bonds that the district owes is $86,290,000. Um, the middle section is how our tax rate compares to what we get in uh, generating local and state revenues. So for last year, the tax rate was $1.025 for MNO, 0.2799 for INS, which is our interest in sinking, which pays our bonds. The total was 1.3049. The local revenue was $1,720 and for local and state revenue was 9,426. Um, then the proposed rate, again, the MNO is going to go down from 1.0241 to 1.0216. The INS is going to stay as is. So then the local revenue is $2,036, and that's going to uh, change slightly because, remember, this was what was published, but the MNO tax rate is coming down, so that means the local revenue that per student is going to be generated is going to be less because of that small uh, decrease. And the state revenue is $9,772. On the comparison for what a taxpayer is going to pay, uh, I'm going to read this year uh, again. And so the average market value of a resident is $90,189. You can see that it increased from last year at $78,150 to $90,189. However, if you look at the taxable amount, in prior year it was 53916 this current year is 47180 because the tax exemption uh, from the state went from 25000 to 40000 So that's the difference there. And so uh, last year's tax rate, if you look at the comparison, it's actually the same amount. Or actually, it's going to be 1.3015 there. Can you please repeat that? So that tax exemption went from 25000 to 40000 Yes. So that's state. why the, that's why the decrease? That's a decrease. And if you look at the final number there, if the rate at 1.3049 had it not, remember we're dropping it a little bit, but it would be a uh, savings of $88.84 at the 1.0215, um, 250, I'm sorry, so or 214. Uh, so it'll be a, 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 a still a savings because of that tax exemption moving from 25000 to 40000 And again, that's a state mandated. So... Um, that's the presentation. If you have any questions, um, I know that I was asked, um, I believe, at the last committee meeting uh, when we had um, last increased the tax rate, I believe. And if I went back several years and I found that uh, in 07 08, it was at 1.24 even. And in 08 09, it increased to 1.3049, which is what we currently have. So since 2008 09, it hasn't increased. It may be swapped here and there from MNO to INS or vice versa, 
but it stayed at the total tax rate of 1.3049 since 0809. Any questions? Sir? The local Board members, do you have any questions? Ms. Dr. Cruz, you have one? Go yes. ahead. So that local revenue per students, you said is gonna come down a little bit because we're changing it from 1.0241 to 1.0216. Yes. Do you know how much it's gonna come down? Uh, I can figure that out for you and I'll let you know. I don't have my calculator with me. All right. But I'll let you know. Anyone else, board members? I guess that's all, correct? Thank you, Ms. Mata, Mrs. Mata. Appreciate it. Does the audience have any questions to bring up during this? Do we offer them? Right. At this time, uh, are there any questions from our audience members? I know that Ms. Maney brought something up in public comment. Uh, are there any other questions that may, you may want to address at this time? Ms. Maney, please come forth. Okay, the other thing that needed to be looked at, if, if local revenue is going down, how's that gonna affect our state revenue for the per student on this? Because that's probably the other part of our our question that we have is I understood that the per student is also going to decrease. Is that correct, Miss? Can you can you uh, elaborate on that, ma'am? Yes, uh, both the local and state I'm sorry, both the local and state revenue will decrease. Um, and I'll figure that out when I figure out the local to um, state the difference. Okay. So, but it, you don't think it's going to be overly much on it? Anything drastic? Yeah, anything drastic. Uh, per student? Per no, student. It's, um, from, it's going down 0 0.034. 0 0.0034 is what it's going. So it's not a whole cent. It's 0 0.0034 that it's going down. Is that also for the, the state level going down 0 0.0034? For the MNO side is what I'm saying. Okay. The tax rate's going from 1.0241 1 to 1.0216. Right, but so I'm how much is it gonna affect the state side? I'm gonna figure that out right okay. now. Thank you. Is the state revenue per student based off of last year's? Like it would, would it affect, what I'm trying to say is would it affect next year so changing our tax rate this year is going to affect the state revenue mm -hmm. next year so this 9772 is not going to be affected for this year but the local revenue will still be affected because that's a in i guess in real time mm -hmm. any other questions Ms. Mata, one of the things that you mentioned is the reason that this uh, rate is going down is because it's a requirement by law, correct? Yes, uh, we are, during the summer months, we submit to TA what our property values are, what the district's property values are that the state certifies, and then they compare it to the previous year certified and they give us what's called a maximum compressed rate. So that's what we're, our, our ceiling is at. Then from there we add the 13 cents and then we get the total rate. So then once TA says what you submitted for the, your uh, property value uh, is approved, and they, they, they say you have to, they have to approve it before you can even approve a tax rate. So once that's approved, then you add your 13 cents. So at this point, uh, I believe ours was 0 0.8916 plus the 13 cents is a 1.0216. Yes. So just my two cents here also. Um, if you read in the newspaper, it seems like a lot of cities and school districts are adopting a lower tax rate because of the amount. And it's fair to say that it's because the property values have gone up so much that we're able to lower the tax rate pretty much across the board in the state, like Ms. Lopez mentioned. Do you, do you want to address that question, Dr. Cruz, to Mrs. Mata? Is, I just wanted to clarify things for the public. That that's basically why across the board, across the state, actually, tax rates are going down because our property values have increased so much in the last year. And that's why we're able to adopt this lower tax rate. Yes, um, if you can um, actually have. So um, 
I actually had um, done a real quick synopsis uh, when I had my conversations with Ms. Lopez. And then uh, the certified totals in 2021 was 1.2 million. And then currently it's 1.283. So it went up, oh, one, I'm sorry, 1.2 billion. Now it went down up to 1.283. So like 63 million more in property value than two years ago. And uh, compared to last year, it was 23 million more. So. All right, folks, any other questions, board members? Hmm? All right, at this time, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Oscar Medrano. Do I have a second? Second, second by Mario Silva. All those in favor, raise your right hand, please. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Mata, thank you for your work.